Hey, all the meeting door, July 24th, 2017, 9 a.m. Finance Committee, Budget Hearing Purposes. And I'll call the roll, please. McTaggart? Here. Here. All? Yes. Bill? Yes. Curtis? Here. Here. Johnson? Here. Raymond? Present. Anderson? Present. Sheriff has new copies for you. He knows of, um, he's received notice that one of his officers is resigning in September. She's brand new. And um, one of his more experienced officers who had given notice is coming back. So what he's giving you is a $10,000 increase in the corrections line, and that's what it's due from kind of a last minute thing, so. Okay, I'll do uh, him with the old, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, I think we'll start off first. I don't know. We'll get to that in the next few sheets I can get out of that one. But, but, but <coughs> what you have in your free range binders, binders, that first, first um, pay, pay, and it's not obvious it's a general fund. fund. It still shows you the salary, and that is it, all about that kind of stuff. Um, um, that was pretty much set, set by, by FOP, FOP contracts, contracts. Um, administrative assistance salary, uh, that, that, I gave that a 10% increase. Um, the 
uh, janitor salary. salary. That includes that is that Chris, Chris uh, Drake, Drake is making supervisor, and there's also uh, Yvonne uh, as uh, housekeeper. Yvonne, Yvonne goes, goes up for the half contract. contract. Uh, Chris is a good and a 2% increase on that for him. But the one thing I caught, Sheriff, and I didn't have time to talk to you about that either, is you've got 100% of Chris in here. Okay. And I've got 100, I've got 50% of him over in the admin building. Okay. So that could be something we can fix. Or are you intending to cover 100%? I just figured I was covering 100% so you guys, if you want to take half and half off out of the year. Yeah, right. That's what we did this last year. That's where he's been. Because we did that when we, last year, we cut our admin uh, maintenance supervisor, and we took Larry and made him 50% of his cost in your budget, 50% in the admin building budget, okay. I thought we'd do the same thing. That's fine. I just That's think okay. that you want to take 50% of it is. Right. That, 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 that for me then would go down to number 21, right. 21 and 22,000. Right. Right. Maybe 49 or somewhere in there. Okay. Um, off of the fence, uh, I had that go up a little bit. Uh, the cost on stuff uh, obviously goes up uh, that we buy. Um, Merit board expenses the same. Juvenile, juvenile expenses zeroed, zeroed out. out. That's more of a probation thing. I don't pay for juvenile. They pay for them. I just call them all over the state where they want on them. My um, um, little travel, I kept the same thing last year. year. Same with gas and oil. oil. We have gas seen gas go down. down. But if you look at some of those, 2012. Uh, 13 and 14, they were up in the 60s, and I don't want to bottom on the out. Uh, and then all of a sudden we have a, we have something going on in the Middle East or something with the Russia on gas price and sell belt or something like that. So I left that the same thing. Maintenance of autos, I kept the same thing. Um, same thing with uh, radio equipment and radio and auto equipment. Training, you're going to see a huge jump from 4,000 to 25,000. The reason being, being I've, get, I've, I've, I've received notice that I'm having one deputy retire in November of this fiscal year. And then I also have another one who was not given an official notice that from what has kind of been an issue is probably February of 18, which is the next fiscal budget. Um, right now, the training academy has built 14 weeks. Uh, they're a little over $5,000 in each for uh, putting people into the uh, training academy. I can, I can knock 10000 off of that real quick if, if, I, if I'm able to get two experienced certified officers that will lateral transfer into the sheriff's office from other agencies, which is always a possibility. Um, it's a very, very uh, liquid profession now where folks tend to go from one spot to the other quite easily. So um, that did not ten thousand on all that. And if um, depending on what you folks decide to do with any public safety money, I know uh, last October before it went on the ballot we had talked and I had given you my wish list so to speak the time which was hiring two additional office deputies if, uh, if that were a and that includes $10,000 for those two decades. Now, if the finance committee decides to use the public safety money to hire additional deputies, um, I talked to Anita about it. You can actually take the entire cost out of that fund if you so choose, which would be training, which would be equipment, which would be all of that. So um, that's why it's $25,000. If I get two lateral transfers to come in and then decide to hire two out of public safety money and take the training out of that cost, that would go from twenty five thousand down to five thousand. So there would be a twenty thousand dollar savings there. The uniform and weapon, um, again, that saw a significant increase because of equipping. I, I put in there uh, buying uniforms, uh, leather gear, equipment, mobile vests, all that was for deputies. Two that would be replacing the two that are retiring and there's two additional. So if, if again, you choose to hire two out of public safety, um, you can take, take $10,000 off of that and that would go from $30,000 down to $20,000. Um, 
because you would be taking the cost of equipping those two out of public safety instead of the sheriff or general car I'm sorry, how much per, per $10,000? It, it, well, it was about 5000 per person, so if you take two out of that, that means that would go down about 10000 Any questions on that part of it? The rest of it is, um, well, I'll get into the, Chris will be talking a little bit about the service or contract since that's done here now. We've looked at the trends on that, and, um, with what some of the stuff that's being taken out of the service contracts are, we've got a lot of angel pest control from um, spray spray jail to a courthouse. We've got, um, we have a catch bay basin for lack of better, what we call it a pit, pit, the catch bay basin that comes out of the sanitary sewer of the jail that catches all the large items and that it may make sites to flush down the toilet so that it doesn't go down Lincoln Street and back everybody else to the toilet up because there's a bottom line line somewhere there. So filter comes every month. Um, this also would include uh, snow removal, it would include the uh, uh, mowing, um, the garbage service pickup. We have um, the service contract that owes it, which is the elevator that people can come and inspect the elevator. The fire extinguisher people, the generator people, all those folks will come and do their inspections and, and test it all out. Um, it looks like we're going to spend about 18 on that. Um, Chris and I talked a little bit about it, and uh, with, with some of those costs going up on, on some of those, he felt comfortable at that level. So uh, I know, I mean, we're, we're projecting to go about 4000 over what it's at right now. Um, and so all that him explain a little bit of that. Um, the diet items, there's a increase. Um, if you look, look last year we did it. Uh, we were 75, five years before that, 82, one, and that uh, kind of unforeseen. Um, we know the food service or boss keeps going up, but um, it depends on, on it's an odd thing that I'm explaining to judicially for. The less, less inmates we have, the higher the food cost per meal. The more inmates we have, the, the food cost goes down. So when we started off this year, um, we were averaging 40 people locked up for quite a while, uh, which now we're in the high 20s, right around 30. So that's that eight thousand. Doctor fees zero. Um, we've been paying that out of the rest of the medical expenses, which is the line right below it. Uh, so I put ten thousand into that. Um, we are just collecting the rest of the medical expenses, uh, reimbursements, which is on a few pages back. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, that that sixteen thousand is going to be, which we're projecting this year, is going to be a high year for us as we went. We were spending in, uh, probably $4,000 a month for the first three months of, uh, of this fiscal year and it's gone down dramatically. Since then, it's gotten better since people who were high uh, medical costs on us. Right. You can see there, if you look, the trend like in 2012, 13, 14, and 15, we were able to pay for all of that out of Fund 320, Arrestees Medical, the fees that were coming in paid for all the costs. Well, the whole thing kind of went south, started with going south last year, and it really just tanked this year. And so when we get over to Fund 320, that's why we had really had to add a line here in the general fund to cover it, because over in Fund 320, there aren't enough fees coming in to cover the cost of these guests. Yeah. Um, prisoner supplies, I kept the same. The GPS on some fine line, that's always a get. Again, that's kind of out of my control because the court and probation sites I didn't put on GPS. So you have to get a straight state court. We haven't quite figured that one out yet. Um, Lee, you're going to see a pretty good jump in Lee from 5,500 to 8,100. The reason being is we received notice from the state that it. Um, Right, right now, now we pay four hundred and ninety dollars and forty cents a month for lease. We, we are reimbursed for half of that from the city of Watsika. So they, they pay about forty five twenty, we pay two forty five twenty. Well, 
Um, they have not decided when, but either August or September of this year, so either next month or another two months, that monthly fee is going from 490 and 40 cents to 925 by a which we will split with the city. I, I let the city know about that prior to them doing their budget, which was May 1st, so they were aware that their costs were going to be going up. Um, the reason is they and t is changing the connection type, and uh, the T1 line, if you want to call it, that it's coming in on right now, is um, because of that line is tied in, maybe on the voice over and all that stuff, I would not want one that. Right. right. It's not that it's tied into our voice is that they don't, they're going away from all the T1s just because they're so old and not they don't have the speed type and they're actually going to come in on a, a line on our fiber so it'll be more stable it'll have more bandwidth but we kind of been delaying making that switch over and I was talking to Ryan Bro for a while several months ago but our intent was yeah, yeah, we're going to delay as long as we can until they're yelling at us. The state is kind of yelling at us because they don't like us on that T1. But once we switch over, then our cost is going to double. So it's going to be any time. And that, like I said, out of that, you know, 925, you know, 460, 750, whatever that is, of the uh, uh, half of that is going to be reimbursed for us by the city. So that's why that don't know. Five hundred eighty one. Uh, that's the issue expenses I increased by a thousand. There are a few things that we need to get for the investigators or um, the camera or the camera right now are going on ten years old and uh, we have some other minor equipment purposes that they use on a daily basis <laughs> that we need to update. Uh, and the last thing we mentioned in the territory house household by um, Chris will be talking about that here in a little bit, but we talked about it. The maintenance and repairs are going to keep the same, even though it's no objective to be over this year. year. All in all, Chris will explain a little bit of that. But basically, we've seen the trend for instance, Chris has started working, and we think that we can keep uh, we can keep that at 35. And then the house house will buy. We increase a lot of that based on this year because um, when we have more inmates, we use more house house supplies, supplies more cleaning supplies, 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 toilet paper, more paper towels, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that comes to the 1.8 by 408. And if you look at that, that two sheets that that two sheets that 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 Bring that off, pull that down into the one 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 eight eight six eight eight. So there's about a ten thousand dollar increase there, and then do the uh, preference side of it. Any questions on the on the medical one? Um, the second page is the court security. Uh, we bring in DUI fees and then we also pay the court security salary and benefits out of the uh, uh, court security. Um, an update on that has just happened in the past week. I'm going to be interviewing this week for that position. Um, we're going to have a new person there. We're going to have a retirement in probably September. What position is that? Court security. Wow. So, Good news, hey? Yeah. 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 So, um, going this September? Yeah. yeah. And I'll get you the information later on if it was kind of an excited this weekend. So, um, but the court, court security officer salary comes out of that. If you look over in 2017, it was 31706. I, I put in a 2% increase, which takes it to the 32340. And that has to have a build that position and be um, at that salary. Now, of course, security, if I hire someone with no previous law enforcement experience certifications, I have to send them to a court security uh, training school, which is 200 hours or five weeks. However, if I hire someone who is professional certified or uh, 
maybe past police officer certified um, that training was waived, so um, we wouldn't have to worry about that. And that person in school, those school run, I think, uh, right around $3,000, 2500 or $3,000 if you have missing somebody like that. So that shows, again, projection wise that we're looking at if everything goes well, about a $2,200 Third sheet is the salary sheet. Um, you'll see in the, uh, I don't know what kind of that, peach color maybe? Um, shadow. Shadow. It's just gray for all of us. Oh, okay, gray. <laughs> all right, I'm looking at color. In the shadow, the, the uh, administrative assistant, uh, that went from 34, 7, 11 to 35, 4, 5, and 2 percent. The part-time, stay the same, and that part-time is same and great that she's shared with the uh, ETSB right now. Um, the rest of those, other than the shading and corrections, uh, Steve Eckersley, the jail administrator, up until 2010, the jail administrator made a dollar more an hour than the top paid correctional officer. Well, then in 2010, the budget to up. Um, for a while, the non-union people didn't get raised as well. As you can see, um, you know, if you look at the top one at 60, and uh, with what I put in for him, which was actually a 6.8% ring him up at 50, still 10,000 below. Now, what the what he has as an option is he can always go back to the rank and file union. So. If he were to try to do that, I think he's got maybe 14 years on, if I remember correctly, 13 or 14, so he would go, uh, he would more than likely be making more than uh, than what he is right now. Definitely, and even more than uh, once he did that 50, uh, if he were to get the, the raise up to 50. So, Jail standings say that if we hold more than 25 on an average daily basis, um, or it goes over 25 for an extended period of time, that there has to be a jail administrator, someone designated as a jail administrator. So um, it looks like we're going to have to have one, um, you know, from now on. And like I said, that is uh, a $3,200 rate, a little under a $3,200 
And then in Yvonne, uh, Yvonne uh, is uh, asking, so that's that what her goes to. Yeah, just a word on ask me as we go through all of these. We didn't budget in anybody's department or by person for an ask me increase. That contract ends November 30th. We haven't even met an initial meeting on negotiations, so we don't know where that's going to go. I didn't really want to put it in by person, thinking that might put us in a bad negotiating position, and I, I'm not sure what we would even use. So what I told every department is leave it flat. When we get to county board and other, I took the run rate of the current four-year contract and what that cost us, and I added in our contingent line there for an overall flat number. I think it turns out to be 13000 for the cost of everybody. So for Sheriff, that increase isn't in his department, but it's covered somewhere else. Um, I don't know what sheet you have in that. The Capital improvement. Um, <coughs> the 715 capital improvement. Um, I put in a hundred thousand on that, and again, that there's two things in that. One is new squad cars. The majority of it is new squad cars. Eighty-four thousand squad cars for three of them. We are to the point now where we need to start looking at replacing radios in that. Uh, the portables that the guys carry, um, we had this year as well that we've had them. Uh, the mobile radios that are in the squad, uh, most of those are about the same range, ten to twelve years old. So eighty-four thousand of that hundred would get three squad cars that would pay. To put new radios in them, we pay the marker in them, we pay to put the obviously the equipment in them, and then uh, two of those three would need new light bars, so that all includes uh, the light bar cost on that as well. The other sixteen thousand out of that one hundred is uh, for portables. Um, I got that in a couple. I looked at a couple quotes. We, we, we go with Kenwood, our, our, our service providers, Kenwood on our dealer, and uh, to go with the portable, the mic, they would be programmed and have the mic and all that kind of stuff that come with it. They run about $1,000 a portable. So I uh, would need 16 of them. Um, the reason 16 is uh, we're at 13 right now. Again, in the local side, I do hire uh, some additional based on the public safety. Uh, that would put me up to 15, and then I'd like to have that fair because inevitably one goes down now and then. So um, 16 is what is budgeted in there now. That capital fund is something that would be very fluid as well as far as depending on what you folks decide you want to do with it, public safety money, if you want to take the bottle off the squad car and equipment and radio and all that out of the that one, and then this fund would adjust accordingly. Um, and then your decision. So what year are the three new squads you would replace? Um, the one that I would replace, well, we're going to have, let's see, probably the one that I want. It would probably be a 14 and two of the 15s would be my guess, but I can, I can let you know for sure I'd rather write that down. I know we've got, I think right now we only have two that are over 100,000 miles, and those are the two that we bought this year. Um, everything else is over 100,000, and, and, you know, depending on the call volume, obviously, but we put, you know, we put anywhere from them 50 to 65,000 miles a year on our squad car. So that's where that 100,000 came out. Last year it was 75,000. Um, okay, what do you have on that? 
Public Safety 310. Okay, this one uh, can be a little confusing because uh, there is a public safety task that obviously is passed, but since I think about 2006 or so, somewhere in there, the county passed a ordinance to collect local entities from outside agencies to bring them their arrestees. And it, it was $26 back then and it's still $26. There's been no increase in the last 10 or 11 years or something. So this is money that we collect from the local entities. Also for more fees, if there's a failure to appear, uh, added on the warrant, which is seven and five dollars, and then on top of whatever the bond on the warrant is, uh, the arresting agency to get seventy dollars of that for thirty five dollars of processing. So um, this is the BC twelve on the hook in which uh, you know when, when you look at it, it probably averages that ten to eleven thousand uh, one year in two thousand fourteen or one hundred ten thousand the um, the other year we were uh, we were over that. So uh, again, yeah, that, that is going to depend on what type of fall, how accurate the outside agencies are, how many people, excuse me, they bring in. If they get charged twenty six dollars per person, and they bring in. How much I carry over? Um, the two that I know of is a little low. What they do is you have to have a fee study for it and they come in and they, they look at the average time and they take what book for in and so they calculate the, the uh, salary guide on that and of course how much paper you use or you're going to get copy or your computer and all kind of stuff. So um, the ones that I know of are well, 138 and 42. So, Again, that depends, and, and both of those places are larger counties, and I'm sure their salaries for their corrections are, are higher, and so that probably goes into that piece of it. Um, you know, it's something that I could have looked into, I guess that it has not gone on since it was first established, so what would it go up? I don't know. Uh, it would go up something, but um, my guess would be, uh, you know, maybe a few dollars. You know, maybe get around that thirty thirty dollar range. Um, and I pulled up the date. So what? What? No, that that, 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 that that money is, for lack of a better term, kind of like an automated fund for the sheriff. Um, there is right now what we take out of that is the monthly cell phone bills over Verizon. Um, comes out of that uh, in the past because we haven't had any other fund to take it out of and we have gotten got equipment out of that as long as it's publicly related. I know in the past we've bought flashlights. Um, I think the cameras for the investigators that we bought about 10 or 11 years ago came out of this fund. Um, but some, some minor equipment costs have come out of that, but consistently the uh, the Verizon comes out of that. And that went up a little bit for me because in the OP contract, the negotiations, um, I agree to, to, for each squad car to have a cell phone in it. Um, and one of the things that was negotiated, so it is, I'm not going to say it runs, Maybe, maybe thirty six hundred four thousand a year is what the the variety is. I think it's three hundred some dollars a month roughly. So, um, please be a good fund. Please be a good fund. Is a fund that doesn't get um, replenished very fast because it is uh, off, off of the speeding citation that definitely drives. Right. Right. Uh, of, of course, course there's a line from back to the sheriff's office uh, and have to be put in that. The state sets that up. Um, they benefit greatly from it because the state they drive a lot of tickets. And so therefore, uh, when they were looking at budget, budget at the state, state level, level if uh, fees from all over the state is going to take the trooper to the right and help them buy squad cars for us. Um, 
we all like here in Maine, Texas is what the state police does, or maybe even some other agencies around us, primarily because uh, a lot of times they don't have a lot of dedicated time just to do track. Um, but that comes in, um, again, it's, it's something I'm looking for, but if you look at it, um, that back in 2012, it's kind of a, the 23,000, there were some, there were money seized through an investigation that uh, uh, a vehicle was seized and then sold, and at that point, um, the state attorney, uh, that money was put into the vehicle fund because the, it was a civil seizure, it wasn't a criminal uh, asset seizure, so, um, and it was not really related. So that's where, in 2012, the state attorney said to put that money. So that's why that was a little high. But, um, I put 3,500 in there, and again, that's going to depend on how many tickets and that are written out there, and how many pieces are white lines. But that can only be used for what we believe it is. And I don't want to go down there right now. 7,112 dollars. We can get about a third of the people with uh, several bicycles. Um, okay. Next we have... But the equipment, you could do the equipment. Could you do, yeah, yeah, could do the equipment. The, the vehicle equipment. For the vehicles, for the new vehicles. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I know. Cash estimate. That I, I just looked at that. I don't know. I must not have updated that. It must be last year's. I'm not sure because I just checked online right now and it's seven thousand dollars. Yeah. It also doesn't make sense that it's twenty-seven thousand because we bought a car last year out of it, out of it in November. Yeah. Or this year, I guess December this year. December this year. So I apologize for that. I I must not have updated that cash trend. I think it added those two together. The East Citation, again, is a, uh, oh, okay. is a fund that the court set up, uh, 317, fund 317. Um, criminal they take a part of the fine and fees, go to East Citation, eventually what they hope will happen is we go papers on about everything, which means some departments have done that where um, the officers, and when I mean paper I mean what we gather, we still give a receipt to, to the offenders that we deal with. But there are some police departments that have, when they do out a citation, it's all done computerized. So once the officer enters that in his squad car, that automatically is transmitted to the search and clerk's office, and they've got a record of the ticket, and then they print out a receipt for the uh, offender, and they don't, they don't have, have to worry about, about keeping copies of their dick and mail them to the search of clerk's office and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's quite costly, and uh, the legislature a few years ago established this bond to uh, get it. They don't get very much. Um, I mean, yeah, I would say 572 is the most we've ever quite a lot of and so I mean, it's, before there's enough up there, there's the kind of equipment that we're going to need in squad cars and the kind of equipment the search department is going to need in the uh, 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 computers. Um, it's going to take the FAA to uh, <laughs> let us take it and we'll some money into this area. Drug abuse, that is the drug asset seizure uh, fund. Any uh, drug investigation you do where items of value are seized, whether it's cash or articles, uh, could be vehicles or anything like that. Um, those go through a, a processing court where a judge will determine whether or not they get it, or whether or not we can seize them. And so uh, we get to keep 65% of that at the state, they get 10% off the top, even though they didn't do anything with it. Um, they turn it off to 12.5% and search your clerk with 12.5% and it's the arresting agency or seizing agency to get 65%. So we, that comes in very highly when you have to have drug investigations where we seize some cash every now and then, seize the car. Over the years, we use 
two of the partners we see is uh, that that gave me problems because they were in better shape than what the guy that was driving them. So um, that has that happened and it can only be used for drug investigation, which includes equipment, which includes, um, uh, could be anything, any flat uh, by cameras, uniforms, vests, uh, any of that kind of stuff that we use, can't be used for salary is the only thing that it can't be used for is uh, any type of salary reimbursement. So is there money in there now? Yeah, there's, there's 10. Ten thousand seven hundred twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is a fund that was, I think, started when Sheriff Ramsey was here. So, you know, the last, oh, he's been retired for fifteen years. He has so roughly the last twenty years. I mean, that's what we got. So, it's not nothing new. Uh, it's not nothing we get thousands of dollars a year in. Um, Okay, the rest of the medical plan, that's the one that uh, Nita was talking about earlier. When an inmate is served as sentence or found guilty or whatever the case may be, they have yeah, costs that they have to pay and that might be. So we can ask the court to have them reimburse us on any cost we, the county, uh, incur on medical expenses. So that's what they do now. Some of these people pay $30 a month, some of them pay 10 some of them don't pay because they can't pay. So um, you can see there, some years we've had a little better collecting uh, from them than others, but um, you know, this year is projected to up on 9000 um, to be brought in. Uh, I came up with that 6500 because so I went back at 16 and I went back at 14 and 13, so they do come up one way, so I figured, you know, I'm going to love that 6,500, that's not rough. But like I need to explain in the past, I've done that doctor piece would run whatever we were basically collecting on that and could pay right out of that and have to take it out of that or just jump along. But at the end of last year and the first three months of this year, that kind of got that blown up real quick. So. And, and we've been running negative at the end of last year, the general fund. A fund can't be overdrawn at the end of the year. And so the general fund loaned this fund money at the end of last year so we could close. They repay it back. But it's been running negative. Now that we're booking all those costs in the general fund since January of this year, um, we've actually, we're only up to uh, an overdraft of $178 in this fund. So. The next, if that's what the estimate is there, that you can see that cash roll forward. If all things hold and we get another 1700 in cash and reimbursements between now and the end of the year, we'll actually end up with 1500 positive balance in this fund. But considering the way that the costs have been coming in, Sheriff still budgeted 6000 here next year for medical costs and then the 10,000 in the general fund. So altogether 16,000, which is about what we're running this year. So the costs just keep getting higher for these guys and they pay back slowly or not at all. Yeah. Now, some of uh, what we do real quick here, and then I'm going to have a little What we do real quick is if they have a state medical car, the state will still, even though they're incarcerated, we can still uh, use that if we have to take the hospital to see a doctor, this or that, and get covered that way. If they don't, uh, the county board several years ago did an ordinance for the public aid rate, that the county is, can get the public aid rate for the inmates. So when we do, we get we get the bill from my name, we have to go to the ER, you know, here lately we've had to go to the ER a few times. They send us a bill, then we send it off, and the public aid people do their thing, and they say, this is what we'll cover, and then we send it back, and I am agents and accepting those. So um, we don't have to actually take on the full cost. We pay the public aid rate, which is still a loss. But um, yeah, some of those people we have that have medical problems don't have any 
kind of insurance or real estate agent. But that's his law. Yeah. yeah. Why not? <laughs> I, I'm sure they made me their $750 line or whatever it will ever not have an insurance Questions for the sheriff? All righty. I think your hundred grand don't get don't get too settled on that. No, no, I'm saying. <laughs> and, 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 um, I don't want to break your heart, but no, no. And then that you know no, that, that kind of just the fact that we went in there lately. We were fortunate enough to get it to get it our our mark. Our, we played the last year, we're still the last year, for 10 years, he's really good. Um, you know, with the amount of miles we've got as a former car, um, if I can give three years away, that would be fantastic. Okay, thank you, sir. Chris? Do you want to go back to uh, Sheriff Budget for 210, Department 210? So Chris will talk about three lines on that budget. We're in Department 210, so the first page of Sheriff's Budget, account number 79010. Sorry, Chris. Oh, okay. That's all I can move on. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, household supplies. You'd like to look up that from 11,013, the courthouse in jail. because we um, had two maintenance supervisors and so we didn't outsource our snow plowing. We had the maintenance supervisors do it, so that was like a savings of $8,500 that year. So if you take that into account, really the trend was never $11,000, $12,000. Once we went back, we knew for this year that the um, once we went back to one maintenance supervisor for both buildings, you wouldn't have time to do the snow plowing. So we should be thinking about how long to add the little stuff that I've done for her. We should be saying that I would love to. 
are, and, and, and you know, I don't have a copy of the admin building number that the program is not allowed to use. Um, I have a copy for you, because I wondered about that. And that is next if you go through um, all the... Thank you. Uh -huh. Right. It's Department 710 and it's in, in uh, all caps Administration Building. Chris is going to talk about, again, those three lines, service contracts, maintenance and repair, and household supplies in that budget. Yeah, you can see in that one, in the 65575, which is service contracts for this building, I actually go in and write down every contract we have and how much it is, and that's how we kind of get to where the budget is. The only thing that's a little dicey with that is that you can see there the snow plowing only cost us 5655 which is low. If you look when we were doing it in 15, it was $7,000. The big cost driver with that snow plowing is salt charges. And we didn't have any snow this year, so we had two ice storms and that was it. So the salt costs were really low. So I think that 5655, as Chris and I talked about that, might be low. So we kind of upped it over. Instead of just putting in 15.5, we really went to 18 because it, it, the salt could easily be an extra three, $4,000 if we have a normal winter this year. Right. The other thing that's a risk in this one, and I don't know where the management department is with this, we don't know if our um, snowplow contract is a three-year contract, if he'll be able to fulfill that, because he is not available. Mowing is one year, snow plowing was three years, oh, we did that. Yeah. It wasn't up yet. Right, not up yet. Is there one more left of that? The plowing? Yeah. <laughs> For four years, so, yeah, we, we don't know. I think, I think Lyle has that on his list to, to check in and find out what. I believe that was suggested. Yeah, 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 I think so. Right, right. I mean, so there's some risk there, but... Right. The, the thing about this fund is, if you look at um, Fund 145, the um, 
Capital Improvement Fund. The management department voted in the last to put in three projects. The replacement of the courthouse jail parking lot for $250,000 the courthouse fire alarm for 80000 and the jail cell block locking mechanism for 120000 So a spend of 450000 next year, of which we don't have the money for. So that's issue number one with that. But it was, and I attached the um, minutes from the board meeting where that occurred. And you'll see my note down there at the bottom Chris and the sheriff recommend none of those three projects. What they recommend are the ones Chris is now talking about. The heat pump and then the admin building reseal, if you want to talk about why you included that one. And then maybe address why you guys believe those are the more, more important to do. We can elaborate on that a little bit, but maybe real quick. Um, we'd like to budget 25000 for refueling and striking the administrative building the parking lot. Um, it's been, what was that last time, 2014, I believe it was done, and then we'd like to stay on schedule and have that be done on the uh, parking lot still in good shape, and then don't want to end up with the situation we have over there with that parking lot or bump all the way and um, stay on top of this one. I think that would be a good idea. And then, Elaborate a bit. Um, we need to be spoke out. The uh, and then we feel free to speak up here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, parking lot. We're spending twenty thousand on that. It's being refueled right right here. To do a whole lot. And we're looking at a quarter million dollars potentially, and then try to budget all that in a year.
This, this committee, that really this capital improvement is going to have to be addressed. Um, and the decision has to be made by this group. Do you want to keep what management committee has recommended? Do you want to go with what Chris and Sheriff have recommended? Or something in between? Um, and, and you can see that I did do the cash roll forward here. I mean, if what you want is to do these projects as defined, there is not money in this fund next year that's short $315,000. So that money would have to come from somewhere else, which would be, you know, issue number two. Any questions? Is there do we have to do anything with the management committee to override them or we'll just you can do whatever the hell you want? At this point I would keep this in mind highlighted and as we continue along we will have to make the adjustments. I don't think we can do it. Well, I understand that, but I was just thinking procedurally or do we have to go back to them? Well the motion that was made here, yeah, was to make a recommendation to the finance okay. committee. I guess that changes rhetoric. Right, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Now, the one thing that is missing, if you go back to Department 710, 110, 710, we didn't talk about those other lines. I do those. Chris did those three lines, worked on those three lines, the service contract, maintenance and repairs, and household supplies. The department head salary, is half the crit. So remember I told you earlier we talked about that's half the crit and so only half the crit needs to be over in the sheriff's department. And I, I budgeted 2% for him as well. The janitor's salary is 100% of um, Deanne, who's the part-time person working 19 hours a week here. And it's 10% of Yvonne because Yvonne comes and fills in um, and opens and closes doors when Deanne is off. So we pick up 10% of hers. Sheriff's Department only picks up 90% uh, of it on. Um, the um, telephone, you can see the list. I, I make a list of um, all the phone bills that we get and what they run um, per month, the average <coughs> month, and then so the annual total. So you can see where that 48000 comes in. Electricity and water and natural gas, uh, all I've done is take the trend over the last three years for those. Is that crazy? Yes. 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 So in January, 
hard for you to accept the problem. So should I put another five grand in there, do you think? Another 50% in January 2018. That's the way they had it all calculated out. It's going to be a 100% increase in like eight months. Well, <laughs> not only say that, but why take it? Of course, we could hear that. Uh huh. No, don't go there. Mm mm. No. All right. No, no, one, one last thing, thing I just want to add for Chris Carr, and that I think that we were here over the courthouse jail. That, that does look like it's going to run over, but um, 3,600 of that, that 20 some thousand are already been in it, which was for a project in the computer room over there that we did it with ID after the budget was approved. So, um, we're going to be a little over 10% of what it may use on uh, Project was one of the budget and all that, so we realized we were going to be talking about on the back of that. But, but they, they have, the cost has gone down quite a bit over the last three and a half months, as far as having a different community and moving on. No, he's going to be okay. Regent Alton, you want to read all that? Yeah, excellent. No more questions for Sheriff or Chris before they go? No work no trees. Thank you. No, no. No Dale? No Dale Strau. I confirmed with him on Thursday, so, or his secretary reminded him, so I'm not sure why he's here. You see his budget request there. He's asking for a 9% increase for himself and 45 for his assistant. He stays for his assistant year after year on his request. Um, Wait, how much does he actually do? I mean, like, can you break that down? By number of cases or ballpark? Not even? I don't know. I did talk to um, the... It, I've asked him, and you get a very big, but a good story. Um, you know, hundreds of cases he carries at all times. Well, maybe throughout his whole practice, but... Right. Um, well, I talked to, you know, when this came up, I did talk to the judge. When he came and brought me his budget on Thursday, I talked to the judge a little bit about putting some, a, another look at it, and he said, you know, he feels that Dale pays fairly for the work that he does. He's done, judge has done it before, was a public defender in the past. So he says, I've, I've done that, I've done the job, I think he does an okay job at what he's doing, and I think that he's paid fairly. That's what I got out of it. When did you take that nine years for two years? Well, he gets that pay where he moves or not. What's that? Are we still getting it? We're still getting to kick money out of the state on that one. Right. The state does reimburse a certain percentage of his salary. That's in the revenue. And we've been um, in the salary years ago when that happened, I think. Right. right. So, I mean, the truth... Uh, let's see. Let me look over on revenue. Is back a few pages. Yeah, I didn't know that was still coming. It's still coming today, I think. We're doing revenue. I thought for sure you have revenue in here. Oh, I know. Do you see it? I don't see it. Oh, brother. That's a big mess up. for today. No, revenue's on for tomorrow. Okay, so if we go to m tomorrow, towards the end, yeah, it's in tomorrow. Sorry, it's about four from the end in tomorrow. And you see account 41120 is public defender reimbursement. So the state reimburses us about $32,000 a year of his salary. So, right. What do we have to do once we're doing it? Do we 
We give him two. We historically, since I've been here, given him the two percent everyone else gives. Last year, yes. Yes. Oh yeah, you always come back. Yes. Right. Okay, so he's a no-show. He's a no-show. No um, Jim Devine called me Thursday as well and said that he has court today at 9.30, so he wouldn't be here. So he's going to present um, next Thursday at the Finance Committee meeting. So we'll skip him as well. And then Bill's not here. Um, Bill will be here. Is there any part of your leader that you want to touch on momentarily? Got the gold on the topic. Well, you think you got one, Joel? Four minutes. Four minutes. No. Four minutes. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, give you a shot. I can't even. I can't even go through it. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, We can look at County Farm. It's two from the end for today. That's an easy one. Um, it's maybe not easy in terms of uh, the numbers are a little squishy. The issue with the farm is that we have a one-year contract, a one-year rental agreement for this year. And um, can you see it? Are you, you guys there? I kind of just started talking. Sorry. Um, I put in, I don't know where that will go, the rent. I put in revenue of 125000 I don't know. Um, thinking maybe flat. That's what we had the budget. This last year, we had a three-year contract for 126756 And then when we rebid it, it came in at 137922 You see that rent there. Um, the key thing about the farm is this rental does two things. It helps fund the general fund. Um, over the last probably two years or so, we've needed 100000 from this fund in order to budget, in order to balance. Um, I'm going to look back. Because when I first started, it was like $50,000. Yeah, in 2015 we needed only 50,000. Um, a couple years before that we needed 150. So we really use this fund to help fund our general fund. That's issue one. The other thing it does do is fund the capital improvement. So in years where, and I think that's what happened in 2015, where we did some more um, capital improvements, we took more money from here and gave it to the capital improvement fund to do that and less money to the general fund. Depends how everything works. You can see the cash roll forward there for an estimate. This is as of last Thursday. I did this one. If, if the rent goes for 125, we would have about 273,000 at the end of next year. That's what's available to transfer one of two places. So when I said that we were $350,000 short to do those projects and capital improvements, you could plan it out. This still wouldn't be enough to fund 100% of it, but it could fund part of it. So that's kind of what's going on there. The other thing that's a little iffy here is farm expense. That's two or three things. Um, and you can see I itemized that. Fertilizer. What happens is the county pays to put the fertilizer on, and then the farmer, the tenant, reimburses us. It's not unusual for that to happen in different fiscal years. Say the fertilizer, if we're organized, <laughs> has sometimes historically been put down in November, and then the reimbursement is due the following March. March 1st of every year, um, the um, reimbursement for the Fertilizer is due and the rent, 100% of the rent is due, March 1st of every year. That's the way the contract is written. So I've got maybe, you can see there, 40000 in for fertilizer. It hasn't been that much the last few years, but 
I, I don't know how you estimate what that's going to be. Um, property taxes, you can see there, they're going up 11% every year. Because we rent out property, either it, it, we have to pay property tax, either us or the tenant. So the decision by the management committee several years ago was that the county would, the only thing it would do by having the tenant pay the taxes would be the rent would go down by the same amount. So we, historically the county has paid the property taxes. So we actually pay property taxes. Yeah, we have taxes. Yeah, we build them. Okay. So I, I, I took an increase, I estimated an increase of 11% for that as well. And then miscellaneous, once in a while we have some expenses like the tile, et cetera, so I put in 5000 for that. Questions about that? That, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. I think 125,000 pretty good figure. I don't think it's going to be what we got. Do you owe me cash rent for that case? Is out for another three years? Or just one more? We set it up three years. Oh, it's all going about three years. Is it three? Okay. And we had a date set for the for that? I think September. Is there anything you wanted to do that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what the farmers are doing. Oh, okay. Post get out dead notice and you know, notice of the public. So, I mean, even before we finish the budget, we will have a hard fast number there. Fourteenth was not available. When, when, that's when the notice will go or that's when, when the bid will go? Is that going to be for two years then? Yeah. The notice is out. We went one year this year because it was the default of the phone on a three year lease before. The second year was defaulted. which was really unusual. We got more money than by going to one year. I don't think we expect that every time. Hi, right, Joel. Make it a little cleaner and easier to track. I need 
Well, and, and Joel is charging more than the cost, so you can't use it as an expense reimbursement. It has to be a revenue line. Okay. Is that that seventy-eight thousand in expenses? Am I looking yeah, yeah, at yeah, yeah, yeah. forty-five? Yeah. And so yeah. what is this? Yeah. Spread okay. uh, any questions on the why? Why, oh, sorry, but why is it so if you're charging them? How do we get that? Mm -hmm. How do we that part? Because part of it we use our yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not just it. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I figured this is the 78,000 that's basically uh, the seven anchor loads mm -hmm. and I figured this year it looks like the townships are going to go through two to three plus I have uh, two townships that went together in Wally and Stricter so uh, they come in, they may get a thousand gallons from them, they may get two thousand at a time or the rest of the country. On the expense side, the uh, assistant department head, uh, that is a 2%, uh, 2.5% percent, percent increase in the salary. Uh, labor salary, if you know, there seems to be a quite large increase in there. The reason for that is uh, Susan has told me that in May she will be retiring. So uh, what I've done is put in a position for an administrator assistant for the whole year. So actually that number includes Susan's for the year and a second. So that's where that, that change came from. So six months training. Yeah. You're yeah. doubling. Up. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to get it. I'm hoping to get somebody in December, January and get through the first first major wedding. I'm sorry, would that be the if whoever we hire to do that, I think we'll make it. I'm sure it'll be challenging. Yeah. Uh, the group insurance uh, is this would be a 99.5% increase. Uh, office expense, that I, I raised up. I haven't talked to them yet. But further on, we can talk about GIS. Since our GIS system was up, uh, Running, there's several things that the county can do as far as buying inventories, bridge inventories, uh, culvert inventories, and then looking at getting uh, a lot of those can be done on the iPad. Out in the field, so I'm looking at two to three iPads for the field people to use, which will, I don't know what the data package is and all that kind of problem. So, uh, gas and oil, hopefully it stays where it's at, hopefully we have another mild winter. Training I mean, is about the same. We've been uh, training been in fairly good this year because the state actually has their T square, which is their uh, their training program through IDOT, and it's usually offered to us for free. So we, for a long time now, uh, that department in uh, central office had one of the and now all the staff have free, so they're offering more stuff up in. That brings me to the GIS expense. Uh, I've been, I started uh, working on that already. We've got, uh, actually we have a training, a guy coming in doing training for the end of this week. That, uh, I've got a uh, estimate in to do a culvert inventory on the county, county highways, and that should maybe, there should be enough on that to, to to change over our sign program to their, their sign inventory, which actually has a, a barcode system where you take a picture of the, the barcode of the, the iPad and it tells you history of the sign and all that. Uh, transfer to General Fund and our administrator saw. Uh, the transfer of uh, that, we, I did not put anything in that this year. Uh, I was giving, well, the first year in 14, I gave you 20000 and then I gave you, this year I gave 10000 and in 15, 16, I gave 10000 and of course, getting our GPS at the county. Uh, so, 
building maintenance and growing them up with this thing. Equipment right around the mileage. Uh, um, we use that uh, a little confusing because we have you know, some we have equipment around all of the revenue. That's actually when we rent uh, rent equipment, we usually use that for uh, for a tractor going over what we do to a lot of projects work with that, which we're going to do quite a bit this is next year, this winter, which one. Uh, did I hit yes. on the next one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that on the open. Yeah, no, that should be, I believe that thing. I don't know how I did that. The shop supplies and, and repairs, 70,000, might want to write that in. I don't know why I missed that. Phone rang and something. Road and construction supplies. Uh, we use that for stone. Well, for uh, for our coal mix, we make our coal mix. Sometimes pipe culverts or that type of stuff. Uh, then asphalt alone, we've already discussed that. Snow plowing by township. I left that thing last year. I don't know what this year's is going to be. I've got one new road commissioner that I'm going to try and have him to take five miles back with the previous road commissioner so I didn't want to do anymore and then I've got another road commissioner that was upset last year because of the amount of plane they had because of the ice storms and one who basically came in from my office and said either you start looking salt or you're going to have to fly your 12 miles so the fly so, my 12 miles because it's cheaper for me to put one guy in a truck and then a pair of business by salt and wear and tear. So, and the majority of the other road commissioners are have the opposite. They rather stay away from the salt. So, uh, purchase of equipment. That I got a, a large that I'm going to put two hand for two new tandem. Um, we have uh, one our spare tandem has electrical problems. Basically, we're back parked in the back now. Uh, electrical problems and the tailgate won't open anymore of course the side goes the front goes through. So that was going to go and then we have a 2000, that's a 96 and then we have a 2000, either 2000 or 2001 when we're having all the electrical problems so I'd like to replace a little bit there. And miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. What's your next sheet? Is your next sheet be salary? So there's 190 is really at 260. What's that? What was it? Okay. The 190 to 260 when you add that 7,000? Yes, yes, yes. And we're carrying, I'm carrying about a balance with, right now I've got about a 1.1 million balance right now. So we're going to feel good. We're going to feel good. We're going to feel good. All right. Uh, I got a bit that came in uh, last, this last year, that's not because everybody was in the going on trip, that was, uh, we had a settlement from the wind farm, and then we also received a huge going on two five miles of the state they have out that national. So that's the reason the, uh, the actual, the uh, MIT went up. So the actual budget is back to the 750, which is more aligned with the 2016. Uh, department head salary, uh, I put in a 1%. Uh, it's usually the last, previously it's been averaging between 0 to 3. They also do a re-ranking, uh, which has to do with the population and number of miles of road. Last time they gave me two and a half percent of the re-ranking, and, and, and I think it amounts to one point seven. I am told this year we probably will get nothing because uh, the state engineers are kind of all about so I put in one just in case they change their mind. More fuel tax reimbursement. That's for salary for our employees. Uh, our maintenance employees, which is the only change, I didn't make any changes except for a 
do with the form of the uh, two and a half percent of child out of the uh, I draw out a uh, projected uh, budget for the county engineering expenses of uh, 100 from last year. Uh, equipment rental allowance, we, we talked about that on the, on the revenue side. And, then the contractor supplies, 2.6 million, and I'm going to uh, work, on work on the action lab and do some work up uh, in uh, Noble Grove uh, at least. I got a settlement for uh, County Highway 8 and County Highway 37, and we're going to do the lease to work on County Highway 8, which is 37. Uh, uh, Eight is the one that goes north and south of the Hershers Road Road, 37 is the county on It looks like, uh, going to your hero page, did I mess up Justin or did you increase him? Uh, he is actually, we, I've got to have a meeting. He actually is eligible to go move from a uh, one to a two and maintain it and got the years in. Uh, so that's the reason I did that. I, I still have to have a meeting with according to the contract, uh, Woody, who is already at two, and Keith and I have to have a meeting and do an interview and, and go from there. So that's the reason that that's the reason for that. So it's a promotion. Yeah. County Bridge.
we have three bridges currently that are going to be under the project uh, under construction in the next year. Uh, I caught contact with the state and we have uh, currently, not including the 2018 allotment, we have a million dollars in that. So I'm going to try and get that spent as fast as possible because I've got four years to do it. I wouldn't lose all that, that'd be $300,000 if I don't get it done. But we've got, we've got uh, one that's done straight over the wedding, and we have two more that should be by the end of the year at the end of the calendar year. Be ready to go over the wedding, so it shouldn't be an issue. Which one's next? Township Motor Fuel. Okay. That's your last one. Right. Uh, I've got budget more in line than what historically was 2016. Uh, I have a, it doesn't look like, a, unfortunately, it doesn't look like people are going to make any trips. So regardless of gas price, we don't get any more money. So drive around as much as possible, please. <laughs> We've got uh, on the expense side, I, I, like I said, I've got several new commissioners that are wanting to do that I don't know that they're going to do the project they want to do because I don't think they realize the cost. But I do have uh, two or three that have large structures that are going to cost quite a bit for their share. So that's the reason the 3.2 million. Uh, and I think we're going to be right around the uh, two six, I believe, on the expenses for the uh, Seems like a lot of these were, and I understand like that one situation you explained, otherwise they take the money away. All that stuff that looks like we're spending a lot on the Yeah, but you also don't know these don't know where balances Well, and I see the balance. There are some balances written here and stuff. But it seemed like the last three, four years ago we have we've been running a surplus and now we're spending the money, I guess. Are you worried about that or that's just kind of how it works? That seems to be how it is. Yeah, we might as well. Um, if you skip two more pages, you can. We can go to finance and IT. Um, really, if you talk about the finance cost, it's really three people. It's me. It's the top three lines: me, Marianne, and um, Amanda. I did put in a two percent raise for both. 
Amanda and myself, hopefully, to offset the state income tax. No. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it right back. <laughs> um, and you can see that Mary Ann, which is the deputy clerk, stays flat. She's an AFSCME employee. So um, she is, uh, I put in for zero here, but when we get to, we can do county board and other, and then it, I'll show what I put in there for an overall number. The office expense at 3500 we've been running, you can see 33, then 27 in 2016, but 32. So I put in 3500 again this year. Um, computer paper and supply, $3,000. Um, that's actually for everybody in this building. We buy the paper for everyone in this building and supply that out of my department. Um, and we actually have a, um, we're paying about 26 to 28 dollars a case, which is really cheap. We last year we joined this, I don't know, paper club and quill, where you can get five cases a month. So instead of we were buying like we bought a pallet load the year before because that was more cost effective. This last year, we figured out if we joined this club, we paid about $32 a case when we bought a pallet load. And then Quill had this deal where you join this club for like 75 bucks. And then every month, you can buy five cases. And it's at whatever price they have for special that month. But it runs between $26 and $28 a case. Considerably less expensive than what we've been paying historically considerably. So it, it's really worked out. Marianne watches that. She tracks when and how much and et cetera. So um, we watch that pretty closely. Then everything below computer paper and supplies, that's essentially all the IT stuff. Oh, well, I see education and dues is in there, but that's small. So systems expense for next year is $15,000. So that is um, the finance department, two computers, and the assessment office, seven computers. Those were replaced. They'll be five years old next year, so we'll want to replace those. So that's what that $15,000 is. And that's why there really hasn't been anything the last year or this year, the last two years. But if you go three Four years ago, in 2014, to some rolled over to 2015, that's what that expense is, and that's why it rolls up again. We want to keep those replaced so that we don't end up with outdated operating software. Um, education and dues and mileage and travel, that's usually me, and I usually just go to Chicago for a week of training. At some point, I pick out what types of classes there are. But there's always, um, I take two um, GAP or GASB update classes a year as well. So um, I try to do what I can online to try and cut the travel costs. But you can see what those trends are. Um, software contracts and licenses, you can see that. That's the box down below, account number 65550. It really supports the entire network and all the servers. Um, you can see it was budgeted last year, this year at 75000 It's down to 53625 for next year. And it, I was concerned when I spelled it all out what I was missing. And uh, a lot of, you can see down in the lower corner, I listed out which equipment rolled off that we no longer have to maintain the warranty for. And so, um, and the email archive project, we deferred that. We decided not to do it. Um, so there's the $23,000 drop in cost there, which is good because it offsets the new computers that have to be bought for a couple departments. Most of the other, all of the other departments, the only ones my department buys, the general fund buys, are assessment and my own department. Everybody else will buy out of their automation funds. So the county general fund doesn't end up paying for those. These are the only ones that the county ends up paying for out of the general fund. Um, 
Then service contracts, you can see there's a little itemization down in the lower right-hand corner. The ongoing service trend still is about $18,000. And ongoing server maintenance is $7,200. We have about 20, 15 to 20 hours a quarter in updates that are applied. So that's $25,200. Maintenance and repairs, those are really small things. There might be a printer. More often than not, it's a UPS that will go out that will have to replace something. We don't know when it's going to happen, but you can see the trend in 13, 14, and 15 was about 1,000, 1,500, then nothing in 16 and small this year. So I, I don't know. I put 1,500 in because I hate to be left short just in case something happens. Um, and then contingent line is $15,000. The uh, presentation to the IT committee, um, I have copies here, were uh, a series of recommendations from um, area-wide, largely related to uh, cybersecurity. Um, here's the four pages of things they did. And as you can see, it just goes on and on and on. And rather than pick and choose as of the IT committee meeting, the IT committee just asked me to put in $15,000 for some of these projects, um, unspecified at this point in time. But you can see the list is well in excess of that. Um, but we would pick and choose to what makes the most sense for the county that will give us the most being for the buck. If you turn around to the last page, critical security controls, you can see that first section. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. This group right up here, that's the one they're most recommending that we do. They're also recommending we do some of this training, which is um, CIS, which has to do with a list of internal controls um, written for the industry as a whole. Um, they're strongly recommended we do end user training and like maybe do half our people that do end user training. Um, more often than not when we have almost 100% of the time. When we have a malware issue, it's somebody did something they shouldn't have. That's the number one thing they're recommending we do is some, right. Some training, it would be online. They know a program that's online, so our employees would go through, log in online and go through this training. That's one of the possibilities. So that's what the 15,000 is. The total comes up to 54. The current year budget is 251. So a very 1% a increase, but our forecast is low, is 215, 216. And that's because of the drop in all those licenses, those user licenses that we didn't have to buy this year. Um, and the list is right there. Some of it's because of the DR project that we did that we didn't have to maintain these fans anymore. Questions about all this? Next is county board. Department head salary and assistant department head salary. That's the um, chairman and vice chairman of the county board. And I kept those at the same rate. The deputy clerk salary. Um, that's the clerk that is still budgeted at 100%. Um, there's some that went from a part-time position to a full-time position two years ago. It's still in there. I, I left it flat again for um, she is an Ask Me employee. County board members, that is the, all the other county board members that um, just the main county board meeting. That's what that 8,000 is. And then 
committee services, 15. That's all the committee meetings at either 25 or 35, whatever the county board members charge at. Office expense, you can see the big increase there. It used to run us less than $1,000 a year. It, um, this year, it's $2,000 is the pace. That's the um, animal licensing clerk in there. She's buying um, paper, not paper, uh, like ink toners. I ran her history of what she's buying. I don't have it here. But a lot of ink toners and supplies, envelopes, stuff for that, for mailing out all those licensed stuff. All of that goes follows her now. Dog stuff. Dog stuff. It's now dog. Publications, those are ads anytime there's either, um, usually it's an, an ad for a bid, and it, that's the most often once in a while. If, it's, if it would be her position, that would be replaced. That comes out of there. That happened last year where we posted an ad for that position. Mileage and travel, that is the county board mileage to and from meetings. Uh, dues is UCCI, that's United Counties Council of Illinois. That is the one um, entity that the county board is a member of. There are several, but it's actually um, a very good group out of Springfield. That um, What I use the most from them is an annual salary survey. We use those to do all the negotiations comparable salaries we compare. It's got almost every position you could think of at a county level. And then I, when we're in negotiations, I'll do um, salary comparisons using that salary survey. The other thing is county board chairmen historically have the ability to write a question and get legal advice there that helps the county board. They stopped reimbursing all of the dues. It, for a number of years, they, if they had extra money in their fund, they would just, I know that's not right, but it's that, it's 11. Um, they would reimburse us the following year and give us back our dues, but last year they wrote a letter and said they're not going to do that because they found out that's not legal. So. <laughs> um, then let's see moving on um, legal fees that is and I that may be too high I maybe should drop that I'm trying to think whose contracts are up next year that pays for our legal uh, use of Gibbon. That's our labor attorney. We've always budgeted 10000 uh, Ask Me is up this year, so it sh hopefully should be done. Hopefully Joint Dispatch is done. We'll start, start with Sheriff again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a concern. Let's start with Sheriff again. Yeah. Never ending? It is. Well, somebody's never ending. Yeah. There's always somebody. Every year there's somebody. Contract negotiation, like painting that big bridge. Okay. Um, auditor fees is um, just the audit. Now, um, I have in there for ours. The general fund one thirty-eight thousand two hundred for the full audit, five thousand for public health agreed upon procedures. There are two reports that we have to do for the Department of um, what is it called? DHS health. I don't know whatever it's called. Yeah, um, I think as those um, next year may be the last year for those agreed upon procedures. Maybe. 
um, because the ending of those contracts for the WIC, Family Case Management, and um, whatever the third one is. Yes. Those are, are the reason we had to do those agreed upon procedures, those extra audit reports. So I'm thinking with those grants going away, we won't have to do it, hopefully. So it could save us $5,000. So you can see that the budget for next year for the county board ends up at 121073 slightly higher than this year's budget of 112000 Yes. All right, Tom, you're up. Okay. This is it right here. Come on up in the light. Yeah. <laughs> Just move, yeah, forward a couple. Because we skipped Tom to go to. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you for being on time, Tom, and for showing up. Appreciate it. Apparently not. Yes. Yes. Anyway, this is very much the same. Theirs is up too, right? At the end of this year, 11:30 does their contract end? Right. But I think, like I said, the last year you're going to go for the key key I mean, we've already had meetings about trying to operate the last year a lower area. They have steps, though. You have steps, so there would be steps. That number increase, that two percent, well, whatever steps, but it's different for each year. There's no. Right. Really, if you look at it, turn it out. It's really just like the FOP sign. Right. Right. You can see on the it's three percent, and for the brand new person, it's seven percent. But it's different for everybody. It's, it really a two percent raise is never two percent. It's more based on the and staff. The first four years, kind of like on the standard, bigger, bigger step. Steps. And then it kind of uh, uh, so really, it's just a step. One line out of the back of the book, even more money. So it's about $12,000 for the last year's budget, which is basically salary uh, plus that $3,500 tuition. You can see in there. Um, it seems like every so often we move that back and touch that fund. It really doesn't. I, mean, I don't have to speak to you. It's per the contract. We have to have it in there for tuition reimbursement if somebody wants to go on. But yeah, we haven't had anybody use it since I mean, 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's all gone. Somebody used it. Yeah. Well, that's the way you Juvenile boarding is really, you want to speak to that? Juvenile you know, so boarding is just that unknown. And then recently, the issue is we use the house on a million. Here's what house is there in Juvenile in Tremillion County. And it's a great rate of $85 a day. The going rate is going to be 140 on a day. But that's the deal. They worked out well. They've been full. So now we're going to go around the County, and which is maybe, I think, from the public money, I think, one way. So it can pick up the tension a little bit. If it continues, I would love to look at River Valley and try to get a good rate for the long way for the for the sheriff to the train transport. So And the sheriff drives them around. Yeah, he transports back and forth. 
his issue is that, like, a juvenile can't be in a car with an adult, obviously. So he's driving down to get it. A juvenile drive back up here, turn around, go down and get an adult, drive back up here. He spends a lot of time driving. Yeah, like that, that kinky thing, not that it's pain or but they, they like to get the, you know, get back and whatever they got. They know it is what it is. It's just a number you can't really, you don't have any control of, basically. Right. Um, but I think, I mean, it's hard to stay around case for that, and it's really hard to check that out, but I kept that number the same. The one thing that, that they have added that's an adder both to uh, the department head salary and the probation officer's salary is on call pay, yeah. which is a flat 16 15 yeah. every two weeks. So not a lot, $16 to be on call every two weeks. So I think it works out to 600 bucks a year or something yeah, they get. Yeah, we don't see overtime at all in Tom's department. You know, that tension after hours, all that, that could be here today. So, I mean, it's not an issue. And that's so the general fund, I pretty much it. I probably have to wait until Wednesday to get to any of these, because most of your mind is getting the same company. <laughs> you just do it the first day and send it to me? <laughs> but, um, no. Not that I'm crabby during this time or anything, but... I see your number on my card. No, but any questions about it? It's not anything. Like I said, but it's just a no-no contract. It's not going to be Right. The current contract, was it a two-year contract? Was 0%. So all they got was their stuff. Not that they went without, they got steps, but there was no overall increase to the steps at all. So that's why Tom is thinking we won't be so lucky this year to be able to get away with no increase overall. So. Uh, the only other salary they could change it up is if we have somebody have a vacancy in the somebody who shoots the gear grade over there or the other way. And now we have a, you know, we can come here for higher salary, like, you know, but then, you know, because we're dealing with higher income here, that's always a, what's happening here. Right, right. So, we went from a person that's been there 20 years to a new higher result. Yeah. That's just, that's just how it is. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah, special funds. If you look over his probation services fee, um, Tom, you want to talk about that and what you put in there. They put more and more of their expenses in probation services fee to kind of lessen the pressure on the general fund. Yeah, for a year, for a long time, that was just uh, that, that fund balance just built up, built up, built up, and now uh, you can see it's like fifty thousand being taken out of it, mm -hmm. so, and that's all the operations. Of course, like anybody, you want to have a fun family, you know, that's uh, I like to have a couple of salaries in there, uh, keep them bad or have it. Uh, and obviously, you have to have a day every couple, two or three years, maybe computers and vehicles. So you don't know are you replacing your computers this year? Because yours are old. Yeah. We're, you're on the list for area-wide. Area yeah. Okay, you're moving you know, forward with that? that. It's going to happen this year. I put it all on. Yeah, this, yeah, 
the probation services fee balance, the, the balance in this fund, is $144,000. So you can see by using up $15,000, they're never going to run out of money. And especially, you know, you might have big expenses all at the same time. We have a good collection right down here. For a few Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's a tomorrow. Yeah. So, and, you know, as far as allocation, like I said, I, you know, it's about $410,000 to put everything together to run your equity off of, or budget that you run it off of. But in the end, only about $200,000 out of the general fund because of salary reimbursement, stuff that's not being used. So, uh, yeah, exactly. $411,000 so is about... Uh, 50% of that, 205,000, 205 special funds, and you receive it back at all the salary numbers from today. Our estimate for next year is 175,000 to get reimbursed from the state, and that's on case load, correct? Yeah, yeah. No, it's on positions. Positions, so number one. It used to be case load or load, now it's positions still. For example, if we got rid of the correct name positions, you're not getting that correct name. So, um, and then, first for my position, I pray that the state has said that they could keep that formula because otherwise you can reduce, you know, just keep doing more work. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, uh, I, this year, but now we have a budget time. It's going to take some time before the Supreme Court gets all that filtered down to exactly how much is going to be allocated to each county. Um, the, the conversations I have with them and the tone was a lot better than previous years where they're worried about if there, you know, you could have been cut, but you still have to look at now. I feel pretty good that they maybe it'll be a little bit more than what we put in so. Was it 185? 185 for this year, yeah. I don't know that we're, we're not going to make that. I don't think so. That's in revenue. Okay. And we'll do that tomorrow, but if you want to flip back to revenue, that's all in the general fund revenue line. And then, you know, the frustration of the state of getting that allocation is a nightmare for it's three pages from the back is the revenue, general fund revenue on Tuesday. Um, we have, we did have, I had questions from the auditors this year that didn't like me accruing the whole amount because they said, I didn't accrue the whole amount, I accrued like almost like 75% of what was due and they didn't believe we were going to get it. We were going on what they told us. So I may, if, if it doesn't get, if they don't clean that up, it'll be a problem again this year. So you have two different fiscal years to that up. Right. And then, you know, there's about to be like first. And right. And then the way they make And then they run out of money. Mm -hmm. Typically, they run out of money. They'll pay maybe August, once the, the fiscal year starts July 1st. We'll get a bunch of payments, August, September, October, and, the and then all of a sudden, they're out of money, and they stop. Like the <laughs> And we get nothing until the next year. And then they'll pay a whole bunch back. It's just, it's really hard to estimate with that. It is, and it, you know, you do your best. I do it with my mind. I'm trying to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You're doing your job. I think it's, uh, hopefully there'll be a little bit of an increase. Hopefully there's a big thing. Of course, going forward, even if it needs a spectacle order to get this money right here. At least on a timeline. Because you go three months behind the way mm -hmm. you do that. Right. But you can at least assist it. And now it's been uh, I think, you know, a lot less of them down there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy to do Any other questions for Tom? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Can you help out? Yeah, there is the next page in your binder is Veterans Affairs, Veterans Assistance. She came in on Thursday and asked to be added to the schedule today because she wanted Charlie to be here. Um, it's a separate levy amount. So I typically wouldn't do it kind of through these budget hearings. I like to keep my focus on the general, general fund and getting through that. 
but um, Jen is requesting quite a big increase and she wanted Charlie, since Charlie sits on her board, to be here and she wanted to discuss it with the committee. So here she is. Um, but we'll wait for Charlie to get back and um, she wants to address the committee and explain her budget for next year. It is a separate levy amount. The max levy rate for veterans assistance by state law is 0.03%. And last year's levy rate was 0.006. So not even close to where we are on the max. Um, Charlie, you got the floor. Why don't go ahead? I yield it right there. Well, as many of you know, my name is Dr. Andrew. I'm the Veterans Assistance Superintendent here in the United States. So, that aside, I am requesting an increase in our budget um, and an increase in our hour or two. I would like to, I certainly, I do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and I'm going to move. I would like to make it a Monday through Friday office from 8 a.m. Um, currently, and I did come from stuff, but I've got about 50 current active claims in the process to the Department of Federal Affairs. The more hours would justify me in being in the office and getting this stuff done. Um, currently, I have last year's budget is at 30.5. I'd like to increase it to $50. At this point in time, the claims that are coming in are coming in as positive. And every year, just some of the folks that come to see me, not including the veterans that are following their own claims, uh, they're coming in at um, every year. $821,000 is what is coming into my office. Um, I need more time. I might need to do more outreach. I, you know, I work quite a bit at home. And I'm just asking for an increase in budget so I can better serve our common government. You know, I'm not supposed to do a million dollars here every year that's coming in. And the only time that will change is when I get them back. And then that will either be pushed on to a survivor's spouse or it'll just die. At this point in time, like I said, it's going to be $21,000 roughly what's coming into town out of my office, not including the fact that I'm still going to be here. I have worked really, really hard to provide a good service. I get the charge for my service. I cannot charge for my service legally. And I just think it was immoral anyway. And, you know, I can... I just need more time, and I need more money to do it with. I, I, I think this is a good cause, and I think that Craig and Charlie can agree with that. I mean, yes, they are on my board. However, they're the ones suggested when I said I need more time, I said, well, we'll need more money. And they, they, my board has approved of that. I need to please my team with the, the five hundred million dollars on the board. I'm only asking for $15,500 increase, and that should stay for a while. I don't want to just pick up that. I am busy. I am busy. There's not a day that I'm about two weeks out to a full salad. And anytime you come back, I'm more than welcome. I'm either on my phone or I'm on the phone. That's right. As a matter of fact, there was a dire meeting situation when I came in here this morning. To give a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a
property taxes, interest on investment, and miscellaneous. So I think your board's going to have to approve, fix, fix that at some point. Okay. Um, but your property tax amount then, you would want 50000 and then another $15 or so in interest. That's not about what I So the revenue, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the revenue would be what's coming in on the plan, correct? The $821,000 every year. No. The revenue you receive is, has nothing to do with the claims. It's we, the county levies an amount for you on the property tax bill every year that people, all of our citizens pay when they pay our property taxes. There is a line item on there for veterans assistance. That's your line. Like I said, the state maximum rate is 0.03% of equalized assessed valuation, and you are currently at 0.006. If you went to a $50,000 levy last year, you would move to 0.01, which is still below the maximum rate allowed by the state. And then, so what you're saying is you would move from 12 hours per week to 20 hours per week. So about a half-time half job for $30,000, and then, so that would equate to a full-time position of about $60,000 position. Then does that fall under a full-time employee for us? How does that all no. no, it does not. She is not a county employee, and so. would not mm -hmm. at any? Nope. Any other questions for Jen? I think because she has her own levy, we can check with Jim Devine. The only thing the county board can do is not levy the amount she requests. Her board has approved her line item, so once they fix this revenue piece, you want to make sure you get that fixed. Um, so that would be the only ac action that the county board could take. Just like school board. All right. No question? I'm nervous as well. Good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Zero employee. Yeah. Zero direct report. That's more than what the 911 dispatchers are. No, that's ridiculous. For a half time job? Well, doubt. She's got a great deal of increase in, in claims coming in. Four of our veterans are reaching retirement age. And four of them are. I, wait a minute, let me finish. And in coming in are women for the first time who are, their spouse has died and then she, they do need the income. And I applaud that, but those 911 dispatchers say they from getting murdered, so they're not even close to that and they work full-time class. I'm sorry. I, that's she works full-time. She does not. Well, she was going to go full-time with this. No, that's 20 hours. Well, from part time to full time is additional hour. No, that's not full time hours. Forty hours a week is full time. Correct me. Right. Okay. She's saying that her hours would go from twelve hours per week in the office to twenty hours per week in, in the office. In the office, yes. Okay, that's what she gets paid for. That's still part time hours. She shouldn't take a home phone call at home and uh, things like that, right? That's her choice. She can say, I work these hours, I'll get back with you tomorrow. We all do that. Anybody with salary does that. I just, I'm sorry, I think that's a bit stout. My personal opinion. <laughs> I take a part-time job for 30,000 a year. Right. That makes everybody else look horribly underpaid. 
in your opinion. Yeah, it's a levy issue. Yeah, that's the problem. It's yeah. a levy issue. Oh, I get that. Essentially, yes. Yeah. All I the board that, I think we send out a really right. bad statement with that. Well, we can go back in history from the day it started. It, and it started here in the last 20 years. And uh, we uh, did lose a court case there. For, and so that's when we originally put it in and got things to roll on. And as you can see, just looking at history in the last few years, it, it's going to continue to spiral. And it's like everything else. There's no end to making it the best possible service. But every other budget's the same, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. General Fund other? Yes. So we've talked through um, finance, IT, county board. We're on the general fund other, which is a catch-all kind of thing. Um, the first top line is group insurance. And um, it's right here, Charlie, 615, 110, 615. So if you go to the next page, right here, right here. One, two, three, four, five. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. No. I think you're in Tuesday. You're in Tuesday. Oh, I'm going back to the other way. So, item number one is group insurance. This pays the county's portion of all the general fund employees' health insurance. And actually, I kept it, was able to keep it flat this year, right now. Um, it helps. I I'll tell you the best thing we've done, and we'll talk through group health insurance in a little bit. I've got that page to go over today as well. <coughs> Um, one of the things we've done in uh, the last several years is move all our employees used to pay all the union contracts, all the non-union people. They paid a flat amount each year or each month, so $50 or whatever. We switched them to a percentage, 15% the first year, then it went to 20, and now it's been at 25 the last two years, 25% of the premium cost. So what happens when like we have um, a 9% increase budgeted for next year in our group insurance costs. That's a shared cost now between the county and the employee. In the past, if the cost went up, the employee paid $50, still paid $50. The county paid 100% of that increase. So yes, the county is still paying 75% for single coverage, 50% for plus one and family but at least there's some cost sharing there where we're not, the county isn't bearing 100% of the cost. We'll talk through how I, I really back into that number. I look at all other funding sources and then whatever my shortfall is ends up being what the general fund has to uh, reimburse the group insurance fund. Um, employee benefits, accumulated sick pay, that's 30000 I always budget 30000 here. You can see sometimes it's, it was over in 2013. It's been under the last couple years. What this is is all the union contracts and the non-union employees have a, um, we have a personnel policy that once a year you can cash in your excess sick pay, excess being over 30 days. You have to keep a minimum of 30 days in. Almost everyone maxes out at 60, mm, FOP maxes at 72, probation maxes at 240 days, you know, whatever. But there are some days they can cash in down to 60 once a year. That's what this number is. It happens once a year. So we put 30 in. Hopefully it never goes that high. It tipped over one year. That was it. Soil and water. Um, there's an offsetting line. Um, we levy for them. They do their budget. 
and we levy for them every year. Actually, I did get the number Thursday, and I didn't change it. It turns out to be like 2132 or something like that that they're asking for this year. I put 2000 in as a placeholder, but, oh, 2320 they're going to ask, so that's $320 short, so I'm going to have to fix that. Um, essentially, they ask for enough to cover their liability insurance down there. It's how they end up, and we levy it, and then we turn around and reimburse them once a year for that cost. So it's an in and an out. Um, the next one is IDA. I did not, I haven't heard anything different. Uh, Ken Bear agree doesn't give me a number. I put in 25000 It's been 25000 the last three, four years, three previous years and this year. Before that, we had it at 10000 I put 25000 in as a, as a starter. Does revenue show up someplace on tomorrow? Thank you, then. No revenue for this. It is an expense to the county where we pay Ida to help support Ken Bergery and his work. Actually, it did start out 25 years ago, and then it was dropped back to 10, and we got into some bad times, and uh, there were some positive things. Well, maybe. I just saw all of the, the donations that they were getting in. So Correct. It well, seems a little well, strange to me as well. Donations, you mean, from other entities of government inside the county? Well, there was a big thing about how much the city was going to give them the other yes, day and how thing. much their little committee gets them, so I yeah. guess I'm confused. The city, the city of Washington does, Gilman does, a lot of different places support them. That's no, all. Obviously the county does too. Right, right. But the county was the original one that started. They were the original seed and said, hey, go beat on these other places because you want, you're doing good things for them too. So, it, But it's all thing working together where it's going to go. Uh, in this particular case, again, uh, uh, we got that 25 back in there again. Uh, it's been that way for years. It might end up at 10 before we're done. Well, the one thing we don't get is like a report from Ken on their finances, and we don't have visibility to that. So if there's a concern, it might be worth asking him to come in and explain how well, much... You don't get that with the audit, even. That's kind of a... No, because they're, they are, uh, I think private they're entity. a private entity, not-for-profit, right, not affiliated with the county. They like the hospital. Right. Um, next item, birth and death certificate. By state law, we have to pay Lisa Fancher a dollar for every birth and death certificate um, issued in the state. And as you can see, it goes down every year. Fewer and fewer people here, keeps going down. Fewer people being born, fewer people dying. But put in 400, it was 388 this year, 381, 377, so 400 is pretty good guess. That's why we had the money on the line item before that, but trying to keep them chasing the more birth here, more stuff to the item. Hmm. But it's not working. Not working. Uh, transfer to the Regional Office of Education. Um, Greg Murphy will be here tomorrow to um, give us his case for why you should have um, an $8,000 increase or $7,000 increase in his budget, about 10% or so. Um, we pay the, the funding, the budget request that we get from him, he'll talk through it. I don't believe it's 100% that we see all his funding. He gives us a sheet of paper that explains what we fund compared to King Key County, but I think there's other funding sources there that we don't really get the whole picture. But we fund part of the Regional Office of Education. He did ask for this big increase last year, and we took him back to his historic rate of 73. So he's asking again for, for a nice increase there. And actually, I think his, his partners up there take a key, whack him a lot more. And I think he's very lucky that we just kept him the same. For many years, yes. Yeah. yeah. Next line, transfer. And this is so. Is this like Ida that we're just doing out no, no, of this is of our art, or is this? Well, it is for her, yeah. but this is actually the yeah. local yeah. education system. This regional office transfer, or uh, 
education. I see you. Who's got who's that in that board? Or somebody? Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that's where you go with. You know, I've always thought any time we're going to give an increase, they ought to make sure our local high school has a full course on the Illinois property tax system, so everybody could understand when they graduate from high school uh, exactly what. Why they should leave? Because <laughs> 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 we got some of the worst property. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> see who, who, who's really, you know, in the property tax system because there's a lot of people get paid, having to pay way too much and there's some people that are skating on big money makers that don't pay nothing. But the, the only way to understand it is understanding the Illinois property tax system. I, I guess, but what are these people doing? Well, I know one of the things they do do is the truancy piece. Um, so, like, uh, Sarah Christensen, this little office that sticks out and hides my office, which I'm really grateful for, <laughs> has uh, a caseworker who comes in morning most of the school year, and she works there on the computer and calling, and I know she's in that office, and I know she's funded by them, and she is a truancy caseworker for Iroquois County. I know there is that. Tomorrow he's going to talk through his positions that we fund. There's a tech guy, an IT guy that coordinates. I don't know what he coordinates with the school or why the schools don't have their own. There's a finance officer. There's a receptionist, a secretary, um, finance clerk. Where's his office at Kankakee? Yes, they have an office in Kankakee. And this is joint wood tank key on that. Yes. Yeah. So right. yeah. 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 And it's based off <coughs> population? Population. Based off population. So, so originally. Yeah. Seventy six percent of his county funds come from Kankakee, twenty four percent from Iroquois. Right. I think they do the IP and band too. Okay, probably. I'm pretty sure, because that's the point with Iroquois. It's IK van. Right. So Iroquois can't keep counting, and they bring the mobile education unit to everyone. But see, that's why I think it's... I don't think this is the whole picture that we're seeing here, because there's nothing in here for bus drivers or... Exactly. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know quite, but... I think that's an actual different funded budget than yeah. IKM budget. I think it's Probably totally different separate. Fund. But this, I think, is mainly is to give state information to our local education, our local teachers and stuff. It's kind of like the go-between and making sure they're up to the level of that. Yeah, well, yeah, I always think We can ask him all. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Transfer to Joint Dispatch. Next is the Joint Dispatch Fund, which, as we're all aware, Heaven only knows what's going to happen because we're waiting on arbitration. What I did do is, and we'll go through joint dispatch next, but I actually backed into it and the number for this year works based on using, in theory, we win all of arbitration. Wow. So, we'll see. <laughs> but I guess my other, my other side of it was, in the theory is, if, if we can't keep this flat, any additional funding should come from the public safety tax, which I did not budget. The public safety tax was enacted July 1st and collected. I'm not going to know until October, November. Right. You won't see a check. I won't see the check for that. I may know towards the end of September what the amount for the first month is going to be. Iffy, real iffy. But I thought at least this is a place set start for the whole thing. Um, contingent, there's always a contingent line here to help cover things, and we need it every year. We need something. We budget it here, and then when the um, expenses actually hit, you would use the you reduce this budget and book it in the right line. So that's why you can see, if you look at 2012, I'm not sure we must have got money back or something, $2,591 negative. That doesn't make sense to me. 
but in 2013, 26,000. In 2014, 8,500. So what that, those were actually booked against this, but you usually don't see it like 2015 is zero because we used it in those other lines. So this year we have 110,000 budgeted there, 50,000 for um, joint dispatch, 10,000 for FOP, and 50,000 for a general contingent. For next year, I've got 70,500. Um, the regular general unspecified 50,000. The ask me increase amount 13,500. And again, I used our historic trend for that. And then potential voter grant shortfall 7,000. That comes out of Lisa Fancher's office. She wanted to budget 14,000, even though she thinks she's going to get 14,000 in her grant dollars to pay for her um, maintenance on the voter registration software. But I didn't want to do that when she's thinking she may not get it. She's afraid she's not going to get it all from the state. So I said, why don't we add 7000 to contingent instead of budgeting, double budgeting in your department. That doesn't seem right when they've already told you you're going to get it. So I added 7000 so she would feel more comfortable with that. And she said, OK. That way it's not sitting in her department. It doesn't mess up the trends in her department. And what we're budgeting in her department is actually what we've been told we're going to get. So. So then this budget goes from 829700 this year to 796772 But there is a lot of theory in this budget. A lot of things can go wrong here. So. Best guess. It is the best guess at this point. It's definitely a work in progress. The next page is joint dispatch. The issues, several issues here for revenue. I copied over this year's revenue line item. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, my budget, or my battery's dying, so I'm going to just shut that. Um, issues with receiving funds from these other entities, if that continues. Um, again, what the answer would be to arbitration, waiting on an arbitration ruling. But all things staying the same, this is what it would look like. This is what it would look like if revenue stays the same as this year and arbitration, we would end up winning arbitration, meaning about a 10% raise for those uh, dispatchers down there. And you can see where the numbers lie. Essentially, joint dispatch is just the dispatchers. It is not 911. It's not the equipment. It's not NIDA or Sandy. It's just the guys who answer the phone, guys and gals. So it's only employee costs. Thing that the sheriff's and the bar needs. Hmm? Thing that the sheriff's department and the city police mm -hmm. and the fire department. Right. It is, it is interesting, and Russell makes a good point. There are five lines that go to the sheriff's department that the dispatchers answer the phone for. They're called non-emergency lines, but they're really, they function as, um, yeah, kind of like receptionists for the sheriff's office. Those calls come in nine. Non-emergency calls where they're calling for people over in the sheriff's department. So there are five lines that um, those dispatchers answer that are non-emergency. And because before 911 was enacted, yes. this was all in the sheriff's department's budget. And so it's been moved out, moved over here. So is that 24 hours a day then for that as well? Mm -hmm. So that would be like for who's over there? Like let's say an investigator. Let's say somebody's calling up. And wants to talk to an investigator about the tip or something. Right. Like that. Right. I get that. Right. Somebody's over there anyhow, might as well. Well, yeah. not 24 hours a day. Not over there. Right. No, that's the sheriff's department. Right. Yeah, right. Well, I get that, yeah. but yeah. Right. you'd think they might have an answer to the sheriff, but they just went to it. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I could kind of get it right during normal business hours, but right, right. right. after five, you can do it just go. They work very close together. Um, so next page is the group health insurance fund. And you can see those are front and back. And you can see on the back side is really where all my calculations start. So I take um, however many at the very top, who are the people, how many do we have in single coverage, employee plus spouse, employee plus children and family, what are they paying currently and what's the premium. At this point in time, um, our renewal is a 9.08%. I know that um, Susie came into the Finance Committee meeting this last meeting and made a proposal for a different option. Um, yeah, that would be, yeah, I don't know if that's something employees don't want to do. Right, it's 5% less in cost. It would mean a 5% decrease in cost. But the co-pays would be higher. So whether or not we um, move forward with that and how we go about doing that, would that be considered in our uh, union contract? It says we have to stay with comparable, comparable service comparable health insurance benefit. So would that meet the definition of comparable? I don't know. The co-pays are higher. The amount they pay every month is lower. And there are four doctors. I guess at the last finance committee meeting, she said she was going to look to make sure there was no difference. Right. There are four doctors or clinics that are not in the new plan, and they're all in Houston. Down, down there, but it right. wouldn't affect locally. Here. Wouldn't affect up here. That's weird because they, they operate together. together. Yeah. yeah. Part of the curl. I don't know. Okay. But she did, she provided me the list and she had just dropped in that email to me saying that she wanted to answer that question for you. So really I end up backing into, and you can see where I go through all the calculations, what would the annual amount be, how much is paid for, the, down at the bottom or the kind of middle of the page, I'm trying to figure out, estimating who's giving me back money. Because each of these other funding sources and levy sources, ETSB, Joint Dispatch, Highway, Public Health, they're all reimbursing the general or the group insurance fund for the employer share. Okay? So that's what's going on there. And then I get down to about 431. Somewhere between 431 and 423, the amount that has to be um, reimbursed by the general fund. Retirees pay 100%, so that gets, essentially what I do is figure out what the cost portion is and then fill out what everybody else is paying me and back into what the county has to pay, and that, that turned out to be 400, to keep us even, 425,000, and then I do a double check if I add all this stuff together, am I close? And I am, somewhere between 423 and 431. So the, the, big, the big thing here is the $425,000 that comes from the general fund. That's really the big ticket for us and why I want to look at this early on. But this has the 9% increase in it. That's what we need to leave, I think, you now. Right. Right. Okay, that's everything I have for you today. Maybe we'll have a better attendance record tomorrow. I, mean, I think we should. It's mostly the tomorrow is this building essentially. Mindy, Bob Yergler, Lisa Fancher, Lisa Hines, Dr. Yusuf, and Eric Stacy. So well, they all probably come out tomorrow. What's Jim Devine? They're probably coming together. No, Jim Devine is gonna come in um, on Thursday. He did he did call me last Thursday and told me he needed that changed. Do you have a summary of all this together? Yes. Not Do I know what the number is? Yes. 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 <laughs> I do. 
Because and, and that helps me. Yeah. Do you want to know how bad it is at this point? Yeah, it's bad. Yes? <laughs> you do already know. He does know. He went to, he came and got his book on Friday, right? Um, negative 387,000. We're close. <laughs> yeah, we're only off about 10 percent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you get there. to be close to We've been there for 7.7 percent. Most every year. And you, you come out of it. Yeah. 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 Well, there's nothing, the maintenance isn't hitting in the general fund total yet, and it's not funded. So that could be a plus or a minus. If we need to fund it from somewhere, and the, the other big thing that's always a big ticket, like line one, farm fund, what can we transfer from the farm fund to the general fund to help pay for things? One. But that's always backed into based on capital improvements. If we need more in capital improvements, there's less available for the general fund. It really, that, that is almost really a big starting point between that, sheriff, capital is a big starting point. Yeah. And it drops pretty quickly after that. There are some where we saw some increases that seem to be little excessive. But those numbers drop as a percentage, they drop in as dollar wise. It drops pretty pretty small that all of a sudden we're looking for a thousand here and a thousand there. All right. And that's where we're always going to increase our revenue. We're going to sell more tomatoes or do something. <laughs> it's interesting because we'll see it tomorrow, but our revenue uh, uh, projection is below this year and the last several years. So this last year, this year we were helped with the wind farms going on, but those are depreciable. So it's, it's really Bob, Bob's number for revenue for property tax tomorrow is pretty flat. Um, for the revenue side for general fund, I really farm those out to everybody. You heard Tom talk about what he thinks his reimbursement is going to be. Sheriff, I send it to all of them and say, you tell me what your fees are going to do or what your uh, what Bob, Bob does the property tax. And we'll talk through that tomorrow, but I really don't want to, I don't want to do those. They're really the subject matter experts. And so I want plugging in their numbers. Let them guess. Let them tell me what they see happening in their department. All right. Move to adjourn. Motion on board to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All the favor say aye. All right. Aye. Vote. Any adjournment? Oh, you wish to get that all blue ball.